It's a doggy. The latest high-profile IPO making its trading debut today. Online pet retailer Chewy coming public on the New York Stock Exchange. On IPO day, that was a really cool experience. I remember he called me and I think he said he had lived the American dream. Ryan and I are standing there on the exchange floor, just kind of soaking it all in. And I was like, Ryan, you're the co-founder. You're the founder of this company. Like, you're the one they want to talk to. Chewy's co-founder and former CEO, who organized the sale to PetSmart in 2017, Ryan Cohen. So you're not a shareholder in Chewy. No. But I would imagine you have a lot of feelings about seeing this company that you built starting in 2011 go public today. It's a very, very emotional day. You sold for 3.3, and you got a $14 billion market cap today. Did you not sell for enough? It felt like a fair deal to us at the time. It worked out if you wind back and you say to Ryan, would you have sold the company knowing everything that you know? Would you have made the same decision today? I suspect that that would be a hard question for him to answer. What's Ryan Cohen focusing on? What's next? Well, retirement, I would say, is overrated, so that... But he should be perfectly fine because he was a billionaire at that time, and he went on to do very interesting things with that billion dollars. A wild day for GameStop. New high score, the stock jumping as high as $159 a share. January 2021 will live in history as a month GameStop went nuts. GameStop. 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 Like On the network, you know, we were just nonstop like GameStop like updates because it was jaw-dropping. It's whipping up that momentum. And Ryan Cohen was able to do that in spades. He bought around 10% of the company. He added more to his position just last month. You heard from cousins that you hadn't heard from in 50 years. Everybody was trying to get any information they could to validate and to substantiate why in the world is this stock going up and should I go ahead and get into it? My name is Shannon Phillips. I was at GameStop for 17 years. So GameStop in its prime was purely focused on hardcore gamers we jokingly internally referred to as we were in the crack house business. Because I mean, we literally had, you know, a store in every strip center. We would have midnight launch parties for hey, big Chris, games. You got one minute left for the game to come out. Just one minute. I actually remember I saw this huge line and the cab driver goes, oh yeah, that's a GameStop. The Elder Scrolls just came out and my son's in that line right now. Just one minute left. Woo! I'm a research analyst. GameStop is one of the retailers that I cover. By 2013, the hard drives were over a terabyte, and game files were maybe 50 gigabytes. So you could download 20 games to your hard drive, and consumers started downloading. And that was kind of the beginning of the end for GameStop. You know, the CEO changed um, several times. It just kind of spiraled from there. So when Ryan Cohen arrived, this was a wounded company. I mean, this was a company that was really down and out. People didn't have much hope for this one. Ryan himself, having built an e-commerce business, saw a great opportunity in the e-commerce space. I think he saw the fundamentals of the business, the ability to generate cash, and he said, let's try and modernize this thing and see what happens. Cohen, who owns nearly 10% of GameStop, said the company's business model is outdated. He then, around November of 20, wrote a letter to the board, and that was disclosed, telling them that their strategy was flawed and that he had great ideas. My favorite part was this all caps, italicized, underlined sentence that says something to the effect of GameStop's challenges stem from the intransigence of management. So basically he's saying, you guys are all incompetent <laughs> because you missed the boat on digital spending. I could tell from the letter that, you know, he didn't have access to all the internal data. So I wasn't as uh, optimistic as some of the other coworkers. And, and again, one of those, you know, first thoughts was, Ryan, this is a different market. You cannot digitally download dog food. That company being pushed to conduct a strategic review by activist investor Ryan Cohen, the founder of Chewy. Cohen, who... An activist investor is somebody who buys a stake in the company and agitates for change at that company. In this particular case, change was for moving away from bricks and mortar, for embracing 
e-commerce, making the business more efficient by shutting down stores. Our firm represented Ryan in his active investment in GameStop. He's someone that's putting you know, his own capital at stake and basically putting his money where his mouth is. To have someone make a significant investment in the company just necessarily suggests that someone believes that this company can be successful. My name's Mark Robinson. I'm the general counsel and corporate secretary of GameStop. I think people welcomed and were excited about the idea of what Ryan could bring. January 2021 was when Ryan Cohen was appointed to the board. Not just him, him and two Chewy colleagues. And everything changed, uh, really almost overnight. There was one board member and his view was, listen, be careful what you, you wish for here. You may not want this person on the board, and I was shocked to hear that. My understanding, he was a little bit of a troublemaker in high school, a personality trait that seems to have carried into the boardroom. He said in the past that he likes to deal with people who will, uh, you know, actually do things, not just collect paychecks. And so he really could not identify with any of these managers or board of directors. And I think people saw that he meant business and that if he could apply just some of that chewy magic to GameStop, that that could mean a, a big difference in the stock. GameStop up another 20% after a near 60% surge yesterday. At one point, that At the same time, folks on Reddit started posting about how they thought GameStop might be severely undervalued and all bought a ton of GameStop and they sent the price skyrocketing. What the heck is going on with GameStop? 390% gains on a year-to-date basis. GameStop shares creating more than $3 billion in wealth. One of the craziest things that I've covered is the meme stock phenomenon. I don't know if there's a real definition for meme stock, but this is the way I view a meme stock. A stock that, by conventional fundamental analysis, doesn't have many growth prospects. And for some reason, the Reddit community gets a hold of this and believes somehow that they can turn that stock around just by momentum of them being in it. FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, is what drives meme stocks higher. Ryan Cohen is the poster child for the meme stock phenomenon. He is the meme stock king because of his role at GameStop. So Ryan's in uncharted territory as a deeply operational activist investor who also is sort of is that first generation of having harnessed the power of social community paired together. I think he capitalized on that as an opportunity. I think he kind of viewed that as his debut, really, as kind of more of an activist investor versus just, you know, an ex-CEO. Ryan became chairman of GameStop in June of 2021. And not surprisingly, the reaction was extremely positive. We had an in-person meeting. We tried to get the news out that Ryan would not be there. We had individuals coming in bass boats and were drinking uh, at 8 in the morning, waiting to get into our shareholder meeting. <laughs> it was something I won't forget. Before 2021, we would typically have two to three shareholders show up at the meeting. I believe that our attendance was over 400 that day. These people tend to believe that Ryan Cohen is the savior of the little guy. He is the god figure of the meme stock community. His followers refer to him as Papa Cohen. He's very much become this sort of messiah figure. Why did Ryan become the face of the meme stock phenomenon? You would have to ask the people on Reddit who made him that. <laughs> I invested in GME because I saw the craze that was happening. It was all over Reddit at the time. The meme stock uh, crowd, the Reddit crowd, basically said we're gonna all work together to buy the stock and thereby drive the price up. The price went from the single digits to hitting the high 400s at some point. And my understanding was that part of that was driven by news that Ryan Cohen had taken a stake in GameStop and had joined its board. This movement loves 
hanging on to a figurehead. And I think he was the figurehead. He was sort of the anti-Wall Street. Knowing Ryan, it is actually a good choice. He is challenging convention. He will buck traditional wisdom. He will go after giants. It felt like we were all trying to fight the big corporate greed. My name is Brandon. I've been on Reddit, I believe, for six years. I did not know what I was doing when I started investing. Ryan Cohen, I had started to learn about him through the GameStop communities, and I started buying more GameStop because I liked what I had heard. He was a regular guy that became a billionaire. Well, why can't I do that too? He uh, was supposed to be this great businessman who would make GameStop very profitable. He came across that he was on the side of retail investors. I think at the core of the GameStop movement, it was basically stick it to the man. When I was originally a part of these communities, that was a big part of the sentiment. It wasn't just a bunch of people trying to get rich, and that's how I felt at the time. They make a lot of memes about Ryan Cohen. My name is Evan, and I've been on Reddit for over 10 years. They love to have him as God, as the Messiah. He's played this role of being a central actor in the meme stock world. Basically, any kind of meme that shows him as the good guy. People are creating these memes. They're looking for a story to tell. They're looking for something to direct investors' attention to. People who don't necessarily have a hero or an inspiration, I think he's just kind of paradoxical in that he's a regular guy who's super successful, who's turned the tables, and people want to be a part of that. There's a sense in which people were attached to him in a way that defies sort of ordinary investing logic. Here's a pretty typical post talking about how Ryan Cohen is going to lead you to the promised land. He's developed very much a cult following on Reddit. In their eyes, he can do no wrong. His followers have concluded that he's a genius and they're going to keep the stock propped up at a very high price. Well, go up, let's go. Ryan Cohen is a guy who likes to play it close to the vest. He might, you know, put out the mandatory filing. He might do a cryptic tweet, but that's about it. <laughs> what he's up to is anybody's guess. His tweets are another example of the ways in which Retail investors are looking at what I would say are non-traditional forms of information to make their investment decisions. Welcome to GMEDD's interview with the one, the only, Ryan Cohen. Ryan Cohen did an interview with a group called GMEDD.com. So GameStop due diligence. And I think that he went there because it was a friendly audience. What's up with this one? They actually went through all these tweets, and uh, the guy asked him, what do these mean? February 22nd, 2022, a pair of shorts. What do you think? It has to be about short selling. He would post all sorts of vague nonsense, really, and all of these people thought that he was talking to them in code. I see the crazy conspiracy theories, so I'll kind of go through Reddit, I'll go through Twitter, I'm like, oh, they think this is going to happen. They think their deity is communicating with them, telling them not to give up the fight, and that one day they will still be billionaires because he is on their side. They concoct this broad, a wide-ranging plan that he has when it's not clear that those plans always exist. He posted a GIF from the movie Ted, and it was the teddy bear, you know, taking a bong hit. The stock went straight up on that. Like, what was that? He showed a soft serve uh, ice cream from McDonald's, and the stock went straight up. So I'll give him credit that he's a meme master. Ryan and I are both on Twitter. We're very different on Twitter. I've talked to Ryan um, about how people look at our tweets, and uh, I think we wish people wouldn't scrutinize them. <laughs> um, we'd rather people just take the tweets at face value and not impute some sort of ulterior meaning in any of them. It doesn't seem like it really matters what he says. It seems like the people that are his diehard followers are going to think that you know, he's always talking in code and always trying to communicate with them. I think social media feeds a conversation. Things go viral. And that's just as true of investing ideas as it is of any other theory. The difference with investing is that real money is at stake and maybe an individual's livelihood is at stake. This shows how sad the whole thing can be. It shows someone a month ago talking about 
how much they're investing. And then eight days ago, they're asking if anyone has $5 so they can buy ramen noodles. This is someone who needs to be selling those shares just to survive, but they won't because they believe they'll become a billionaire. People that said, uh, we will not sell our shares if the price w won't look like a phone number. They basically went all in to the point of uh, catastrophe for many. I'm just scrolling Reddit posts right now. A lot of these people who are posting saying they're willing to hold for the rest of their lives. I'm pretty sure at this point they want to give RC their paychecks directly. No matter what he does, these guys follow him and they turn anything he does into bullish sentiment. I originally would bet for Ryan Cohen because I believed he was a man of the people and was going to take these companies somewhere. My feelings about all this started to change when Ryan Cohen, in my opinion, rug pulled Bed Bath & Beyond.